If a supervolcano ever erupted off the coast of Oregon, the first signs wouldn't be an explosion right away. It would probably start with strange activity deep below the ocean floor. Scientists would notice small earthquakes happening more often than usual, along with a rising dome of lava slowly pushing up the sea floor. That part of the Pacific Ocean, near the Juan de Fuca Ridge, is already geologically active. It sits right on the edge of the Cascadia subduction zone, where two tectonic plates are constantly grinding against each other. So the warning signs might look like normal volcanic or earthquake activity at first. But this would be different, more intense, and happening all at once. The water temperature around the area might start rising. Steam vents and plumes of gas would rise up from the ocean floor and the water could turn cloudy or discolored. Fish and marine animals might start fleeing the area, reacting to sudden changes in pressure, temperature, and chemicals. Scientists monitoring the area would detect rising levels of sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide. That's when alarm bells would really go off. These are the types of gases released when magma is building up close to the surface. And a massive amount of it could mean a supervolcano is getting ready to blow. News reports would start coming in, warning people along the Oregon and the Northern California coasts. Emergency services would begin preparing for a possible eruption. The US Geological Survey and us, NOAA, would issue alerts and begin tracking everything closely. People living along the coast might be told to evacuate even though the volcano is still underwater. That's because a supervolcano under the sea doesn't just erupt with lava, it can trigger tsunamis, massive clouds of ash, and poisonous gases. Then it would happen. If the volcano erupted all at once, the explosion would be unlike anything anyone has ever seen. The force would send a huge plume of ash, gas, and debris shooting up from the ocean, since water would instantly flash into steam when it hit the magma. The explosion could be even more violent than one on land. The blast would destroy everything within dozens of miles, both under the sea and in the air. A massive crater would be left on the ocean floor. The eruption would also displace a massive amount of seawater, likely triggering a powerful tsunami almost immediately. That wave would start racing across the ocean in every direction. Coastal towns along Oregon, Washington, and Northern California would only have minutes to react. Even places as far away as Alaska and Hawaii could feel the effects. The ash cloud, meanwhile, would begin spreading high into the atmosphere, carried by strong winds. Planes would be grounded, skies would go dark, and breathing outside could become dangerous. That would just be the beginning. In the next part, we'll look at what happens in the hours and days after the eruption and how it could affect not just the West Coast, but the entire country. In the hours right after the eruption, the West Coast would be in chaos. The tsunami triggered by the explosion would hit the Oregon coastline first. Towns like Newport, Lincoln City, and Coos Bay would be among the first to get hit. With only minutes of warning, many people wouldn't have time to get to higher ground. Waves as tall as buildings would crash into the shore, wiping out homes, roads, and anything in their path. The force of the water would drag debris miles inland, turning once peaceful neighborhoods into wreckage. Farther down the coast, places in Northern California, like Crescent City and Eureka, would also feel the full power of the wave. Washington's coast wouldn't be spared either. The water would slam into the ports, flood highways, and knock out power. Emergency systems would be overwhelmed. First responders would be racing to help, but the damage would make many areas impossible to reach. Entire stretches of coastline might become completely unrecognizable in just a few hours. At the same time, the ash cloud from the eruption would begin drifting across the sky. Depending on wind direction, it could move inland fast. Ash is not like soft snow. It's more like tiny pieces of glass. When it settles, it clogs engines, shuts down power plants, and makes it hard to breathe. Towns as far inland as Eugene, Bend, and even Boise could find themselves covered in a gray suffocating layer. Breathing outside without a mask would become dangerous, especially for kids, the elderly, or anyone with asthma or other lung issues. Flights across the Pacific Northwest would be canceled. Airports from Portland to San Francisco would shut down and skies across the region would be eerily quiet. Ash in the upper atmosphere can stall jet engines and no one would take the risk of flying through it. Major highways would be buried in ash and debris, making ground travel nearly impossible in some areas. The power grid would be in serious trouble too. Ashfall can cause transformers to short out and power lines to snap. Some cities could lose power for days or even weeks. With communication lines down, it would become harder for emergency crews to coordinate. People in the worst hit areas might be cut off completely. 
unable to call for help or even find out what's happening beyond their own street. Food and clean water would start becoming scarce fast. Grocery stores wouldn't be able to restock and ash would contaminate rivers and reservoirs. Cities would urge people to boil water before drinking it if they still had power. Hospitals would quickly fill up with people suffering from injuries, breathing problems, or exposure to the elements. In some places, makeshift shelters would have to be set up to house survivors. And all of this would be happening just in the first day or two. If the super volcano off the coast of Oregon were to erupt with full force, one of the most dangerous things to come right after the blast would be the wave. Not just a regular wave, but a giant, unstoppable wall of water. We're talking about a tsunami that could be hundreds of feet high, moving at the speed of a jetliner. When that much of the ocean floor gets torn open and shoved around in such a short amount of time, the ocean has nowhere else to go. It rises and it crashes toward the land with unbelievable power. This wave wouldn't just hit Oregon, it would slam into the entire west coast. Places like Crescent City, Eureka, and Coos Bay would be among the first to feel it. Cities like San Francisco and Seattle wouldn't be far behind. Depending on where the eruption started and how the seafloor moved, some places might only get minutes of warning. Others could have up to an hour, but when the wave came, it would come fast and it would come hard. Entire coastal towns could be wiped out in one single strike. Buildings, roads, cars, and even people would be swept away. The tsunami wouldn't be one clean wave and then it's over either. There could be multiple waves coming in and out for hours. The first one might weaken buildings. The second or third could finish them off. Even places several miles inland would not be safe, especially in lower lying areas where the water could push its way through rivers and bays. Ports and harbors would be destroyed. Fishing boats, container ships, and ferries would be tossed around like toys. Any oil tankers nearby could be damaged, causing leaks into the ocean. That would create a whole new environmental disaster on top of the eruption. Emergency services would be stretched too thin. Even if rescue teams were prepared for a normal tsunami, this wouldn't be normal. A super volcano triggered wave is on another level. Coastal highways would vanish. Power lines would go down. Communication would be lost in many areas. People would be separated from their families. Cell towers near the coast would be gone in an instant, and that would make it even harder for people to know what was coming next. Meanwhile, people farther inland would be watching the news, trying to understand what was going on. Shelters would fill up quickly. Evacuations would have to move even faster. Airports and cities like Portland and Sacramento would be packed with people trying to get out, but many flights would still be grounded because of the ash in the air. That means the roads would be jammed, gas stations would run dry, and tempers would rise. People would be scared, confused, and desperate. And, and this isn't just about the United States. A wave that big starting in the Pacific wouldn't stop at one country's border. After it hit the West Coast, it would keep going. Hours later, it could reach Hawaii. Eventually, it might even make it as far as Japan, the Philippines, and parts of Australia. It would lose some power the farther it traveled, but it would still be strong enough to do damage. In the middle of all this, the volcano could still be active. That's what makes the situation so scary. The eruption, the ash, the fires, the wave, none of it means it's over. In the final part, we'll talk about what the world could look like after all this. Could life return to normal or would things be changed forever? In the weeks and months after this super volcano erupted off the coast of Oregon, the world would be a very different place. The skies across large parts of the globe would still be filled with ash. That thick gray dust would block out sunlight, drop temperatures and make it hard to breathe in some areas. Crops would fail, especially in the Northern Hemisphere. Farmers in places like California, Canada, and even parts of Europe might see their entire harvest ruined by cold, dark skies and falling ash. This sudden change in the Ka climate is sometimes called a volcanic winter. It has happened before, thousands of years ago, when other super volcanoes erupted. Back then, global temperatures dropped by several degrees for months or even years. If this were to happen today, food would quickly become a global crisis. Grocery store shelves would empty fast. Countries that rely on imported food would be hit the hardest. That includes places like Japan, uh, the United Kingdom, and many island nations. With food supplies down and power grids damaged from the eruption, millions of people could find themselves in the dark and hungry. Some might be forced to move, creating huge waves of climate refugees. Major cities like Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Seattle might lose power for weeks, Clean drinking water would also become harder to find, especially if local water sources were contaminated with ash or debris. The economic fallout would be massive. Entire industries could collapse. 
especially those that rely on travel, farming, or shipping, global stock markets would crash. Factories might shut down because they could not get the parts or materials they need. Businesses in every corner of the world would feel the impact, even if they were nowhere near the blast zone. The damage to the ocean would also have long-term effects. The massive tsunami would have pushed salt water deep into freshwater rivers and destroyed coral reefs and underwater ecosystems. Fish populations would take years to bounce back. And if oil tankers or chemical plants near the coast had leaked during the disaster, marine life might never fully recover. At the same time, governments around the world would be trying to figure out how to respond. Emergency funds would run out quickly. The United Nations might step in, sending aid to the hardest hit areas. Countries might have to work together more closely than ever before just to make sure people could eat, stay warm, and survive the next winter. There would also be deep emotional scars. Millions of people would lose homes, loved ones, and any sense of normal life. Schools would close for months, maybe longer. Hospitals in some areas might shut down from lack of supplies or electricity. Mental health problems like anxiety, fear, and grief would rise in every community touched by the disaster. And even after the ash cleared and the skies brightened, the threat of more eruptions could still hang over everyone's heads. Scientists would continue to monitor the area closely, unsure if the worst was truly over. It might take decades for coastal towns to rebuild, if they are ever rebuilt at all. But even in all of that darkness, there would be signs of hope. People tend to come together in times of crisis. Volunteers would help rescue efforts. Families would rebuild homes. Communities would share food and supplies. And slowly, day by day, life could start to come back. Still, if a supervolcano ever erupts off the coast of Oregon, the world as we know it would never be the same again. The damage wouldn't just be about what was lost, but about how we learned to live in a world that suddenly became very different.